in this example, we are going to draw the shear and moment diagram. For this simply supported beam, we have a pin here at A, a roller here at B. This beam is of length L, which is seven meters. And we have this uniformly distributed load across the entire span between A and B. And that load is 12 newtons per meter. So every meter, we have 12 newtons of force coming down. So just like with any other shear diagram or shear moment diagram problem, the very first thing you always want to do is draw the free body diagram. So I'm going to redraw that beam here. Here is point A. Here is point B. We know that the pin at point A supports two different reactions, one vertically and one horizontal. So there's our horizontal reaction. I'm going to call this a Y and I'm going to call this a X. So that's a horizontal reaction. And here at B, we only have a roller. So we know that it's only a vertical reaction, which I'll just call B Y. Now, the very first thing we can do is actually look at this a X reaction and notice that there is no load going in the horizontal direction or the x-axis. So ax we can naturally see is zero. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and draw that distributed load in, which is our w load. And that is this uniformly distributed load of 12 newtons per meter. And to make this problem a little easier, I'm actually going to take this distributed load and resolve it in a point load. And we can do that when we're finding reactions because we can use the single point load in the middle that represents W or this 12 Newton per meter to figure out what AY and BY is. So we know that we can figure out what P is by taking W and multiplying it by L. So W we know is 12 Newtons per meter and L is 7 meters. And if we do the math, that resolves to 84 Newtons. Now do note that when you draw your shear and moment diagram, do not use this P load in the middle band. We're only doing this just so we can figure out what the reactions are. We're going to have to draw the shear and moment diagram based on the actual loading and actual reactions. So this actual W load and the actual AY and BY reactions. So in order to figure out what these reactions are, I can actually do the sum of moments at point A. So if I do sum of moments at point A and I say that is positive, then we have this positive by, well, this needs to equal zero, right? So we have by times its distance from a, which is seven meters. And then this concentrated load p minus 84 newton times three and a half meters, right? Halfway between point a and point b. And that should be equal to zero. And if we simply do the math, we find that by is equal to 42 newtons. And then we can do the sum of forces in the y direction. So I'm going to say that is positive. That also needs to equal zero, right? So we have this positive AY going up this reaction here. And we just figured out what BY is. So that is plus 42 Newtons. And then we have this minus P, right? This minus 84 Newtons. And that's because it's going down. That needs to equal zero. And again, if you do the math, we find that AY is also equal to 42 newtons. And that makes sense, right? Because this distributed load is uniformly distributed across the entire span. So our reactions should be the same, 42 and 42. So the next thing we want to do is figure out what our shear is going to look like. So we're going to go ahead and draw our shear diagram right here. I'll just call that V for shear. And that is going to be in units of newtons. So if you look at point A, which is right there, we know that at this very start of the shear diagram, we actually have zero newtons of shear. And that's because we're looking at the very left part of this joint. But if we look to just the right side of this joint, we know that the shear is going to be 42 up here. And why is that? Well, if we take a look at this joint right here, this joint A, I'm going to go ahead and draw it up here. So here's that point A, here's the tiny portion of the beam just to the right side of A. And remember, this distance is incredibly small. We have this AY reaction here, which is 42 newtons. And remember, our positive internal shear force should be drawn down. I'll just call it VAY. And if this entire beam is in static equilibrium, then that means that this little portion of the beam or this joint should be in static equilibrium. So if we did the sum of forces in the y direction equals zero, and I said positive was up, then we would have 42 newtons positive minus VAY, and that's equal to zero. And if we 
did the math there, we would find that the shear right to the right side of A is going to be 42 newtons. So that means our shear up here at this diagram, the shear diagram starts at 42. Now we have this uniformly distributed load and this uniformly distributed load applies 12 newtons for every meter of this beam. So at every increment of this beam, this W load is gonna push the shear diagram down. And since our load here is constant, it is constant, we know that our shear diagram is going to be linear. So what does that mean? Well, if this is 12 newtons per meter and it starts at the shear diagram starts at 42, newtons and that means every meter is going to be pushed down by 12. So if we go one meter to the right to this point here, well 42 minus 12 that's 30, so 30 somewhere about there and then if we go another meter, so we go two meters out, then this point right here should be 18, right? 30 minus 18, so this was 30, this is going to be 18 because 30 minus 12 is 18 and you can see that this is going to be a linear shear diagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this shear diagram that, and at the very end of the shear diagram, we have this reaction BY, which we found was 42 newtons, and that 42 newtons is actually gonna be pushed back up on our shear diagram, and this point right here is gonna be minus 42, and that's, if you did the math, 42 minus 12 times seven will give us minus 42. So 42, we started off with 42, and we know that this load is gonna bring us down 12 Newton per meter, and we have seven meters of it. This is going to equal negative 42. And this shear diagram actually looks a little sloppy. It should be, the shear diagram should cross the axis right in the middle. It's just the way I've drawn it. So I'll just go ahead and clean that up. All right, that looks a little bit better. So now we know that this shear diagram is positive here because it's above the x-axis, and this is negative here because it's below the axis. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so we have room to draw our moment diagram. And our moment diagram is gonna be pretty interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the axis that we're gonna draw our moment. And since our units are in metric, we're gonna have Newton meter as the moment units. So now what's interesting about shear and moment diagrams is that the shear diagram actually gives us the slopes for every point along our moment diagram. So if we look at the values of the shear diagram, those values correspond to the magnitude of those moment slopes, of those slopes along the moment diagram. So for an example, we have this 42 here right at the start at point A, and 42, relatively speaking, is the biggest value on this shear diagram. Everything else is smaller than 42. So we know that the slope at this point A, this first point, is going to be steep. Now since this is a positive 42, or in other words, the shear is above this black line, this axis, then that slope should be increasing, and it should be going up and to the right. So what I'm gonna do here is actually draw in the slope right at that point. So that slope should look something like this. It should be pretty steep and it should be increasing this way up and to the right. And that's because the shear is positive, that's why it is increasing, and it's pretty steep because this 42 is bigger than 30 or 18 or any other value here. Well, what about at the very middle of the shear diagram? The shear there is zero, right? It crosses over the shear axis. So that means at the very middle of the moment diagram, our slope is actually going to be flat, zero slope, right? How about at 30, this one meter over from point A? This is point A. Well, 30 is still positive, so we know the slope is going to be increasing, but it's not as big as 42, so the slope is not gonna be as steep as the slope for 42 was. So if I draw in that slope, slope is actually going to look something like this. It's still positive, it's still increasing, but it's not as steep as this 42. And that's because the numerical magnitude of this 30 is smaller than 42. How about two meters over, right here at this point where we figured out the shear was 18 newtons. Well, it's still positive, so we know the shear is going to, or the slope is going to increase, but it's not gonna be as steep as 30 or 42. But we know it's gonna still increase because here it's zero. So the slope is actually gonna look something like that. 
Okay, so we know what the slopes are going to look like on the left side of this moment diagram, and you can actually start to see that this is going to be some kind of parabolic shape, and that makes sense because if this load was constant, then that means our shear is going to be linear. And if our shear was linear, that means our moment is going to be parabolic. So let's actually take a look at the shear diagram on the right hand side. This is minus 42. So the slope here is going to be pretty steep because the magnitude or the absolute value of this negative 42 is 42. But since this is a negative shear, the slope is actually going to decrease. So it's going to be going down and to the right, whereas positive slopes were going up and to the right. So what about one meter over from the right hand side? So this is one meter over. Well, if we did the math, this would be minus 32. So the slope at this point would be somewhere over here. And 32, the magnitude, 32 or the absolute value is not as high as 42. So this slope is actually going to be like that. It's still decreasing, so it's still going to the right and down. That's because this is a negative shear, but 32 isn't as steep as 42. Well, what about two meters over? Somewhere over here. So this is two meters over. Same thing, it's gonna be negative 18 if you did the math. And at that point, it's still negative, so we know the slope is going to decrease, but not as much. So it's gonna be flatter than this slope, but not as flat as this slope. So it's going to look something like that. So now that we know what the slopes for all these points on the moment diagram look like, we can actually go ahead and draw in our moment diagram. And it's going to be parabolic, just like our slopes are showing. And there you go. We found our moment diagram based off of the values of our shear diagram and the shape of our shear diagram. Now, how do we find the maximum point here? Well, we know the maximum occurs right at the middle of this beam. And we know we can find the values on the moment diagram based off of the area underneath the curve of the shear diagram. So this is M max. And I can actually find M max by taking the area under the curve from point A up to the middle of the beam. So I want to figure out what the area is here. So M max is going to be, well, this is a triangle, right? So it's going to be one half base. This is three and a half meters, right? Half of seven, three and a half meters times this height, which is 42 newtons. And if we did the math, our max moment should be 70. 3.5 newton meters. There you go. Shear and moment diagram for a simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load on it.